theater. I love the idea that you can transform, become somebody else, and look at life with a completely new perspective. The idea that in that room, at that moment, everyone, regardless of their age, their gender, their race, their color, their religion, comes together. At that moment, we transcend space and time together. original uh, video, original animation. Um, I love using popular culture and using, using what grabs you, you know, like the sounds that move people today. revolution. It's a human and technological revolution. It's conceptual, it's universal, it's beyond words and numbers. It's happening. The natural progression of science and art, finding each other to better touch and define the human experience. question the possible. We are here to challenge the impossible. Yay. Thank you. Thank you so much. My name is Natasha Tsakos, and uh, you did not want to meet me in an elevator. <laughs> it's been a challenge having to describe my work when I meet people for the first time. But what's interesting is as we start to move exponentially faster, definitions may update themselves by the hour, right? Our vocabulary may become a real-time algorithmic word bank. Could you imagine having a conversation like that, where the meaning of words constantly adapts? So I'm not a programmer or an engineer. My knowledge is as general as yours when it comes to technology. But I have been under the influence of boggling information over the years that has provoked and inspired me to think differently about what I love so much, theater. And I realized two things. The first thing is, theater has nothing to do with technology. It's as though you, you knew how to speak, but you had nothing to say. You'd make a lot of funny noise, you know? You need content. And I know the word content doesn't mean much nowadays because everybody is talking about content. Uh, it ranges from the logo on a can of soup to dogs dancing on YouTube to the application uh, or the coding of an app. It's very confusing. But for me, it's about creating and telling relevant stories from original points of views in unpredictable ways and going somewhere together. Theater is pure teleportation by means of suspension. It's a voyage into the archives of the human imagination, a passport to all what-ifs. It's not about technology. I've seen shows that use projections, motion tracking systems, different gadgets as a gimmick. Or sometimes they're so experimental they give me a headache or act as a cover-up for a lack of content. 
Or could it be that the content doesn't measure up to the technology? Could it be that theater needs a content update? The, th the second thing I realized is it's all about technology because technology is changing us on profound existential, neurological, and biological levels. Just look around. Past Botox and denial is the next generation. <laughs> and they look a little like this. They're born with computing power, the world at the tip of their finger. They speak and write in codes, attend turn hacker, and live most of their lives in a virtual state. How do you reach him? It's more than targeting an age range. It's addressing an evolutionary shift. I talked to my furniture. <clears throat> my furniture has distinguished personalities. And I wouldn't confess to such lunacy if it weren't for the fact that we are entering an age of intelligent domestic life. Your fridge, Philip, will order food for you when it is running out. Your carpet, Flora, will call 911 if you fall at a certain impact. My all-time favorite and original, Teddy, your pillow, will remember your dreams and replay them during the day, becoming a video screen. Why not? What if theater was intelligent? What if a show transcended its physical space? What if there was a play called Gossip, whereby using face recognition software and your Facebook data, actors on stage would talk about everybody in the audience? <laughs> you know, the new smart comedy hits. What if circuses had acrobats perform with acrobats in stunts never seen before, the greatest show on earth? What if a production was tailor-made just for you? with your environments that you selected, your playlists, colors, filters, through augmented reality glasses, what if you could leave your digital imprints on stage for as long as the show ran, a sort of ever-evolving plot? Really, what does a system upgrade of theater look like? How will the performer audience interaction change now that we're so used to participating in the lives of strangers? How will the immersive world of video games completely transform the theatrical experience? Will the crew be computerized, intelligent, mobile? Will scripts be crowdsourced? Will the next generation of performers have digital enhancements? Augmented voices? Music synthesizer chip implants? I want one. Will the audience be able to manipulate objects on stage from their seats? And at this point, who is performing? Where is the show really happening? Is it still theater? What do we call it? And here we go back in the elevator. So <laughs> I wasn't always like this. I come from a traditional theater conservatory training. I have Shakespeare my Moliere to Tennessee, and I am wild for Beckett. I am. But I got a little tired of the redundancy. I find that theater, like other art forms, keep playing the, the same track on repeat. If you're lucky, you get a remix or a mashup. But I wanted to DJ my own ideas, concepts, theories. So this is when I decided I'd create the shows that I would want to see. I didn't know what I was doing, and I probably still don't. All I knew is that I would give myself permission to imagine anything and reverse engineer my way from there. Shortly after creating my first uh, multimedia show, a world opened its doors to me. And it wasn't theater. It was the entrepreneurial science and tech world. It was really surprising. But I think the reason why is because by nature, those worlds have to be curious and open and flexible in order to keep up. I love being in dynamic environments and meeting people who have nothing to do with what you do because they bring foreign bits of information that spark synapses and open new pathways of understanding. And that's my favorite moment in the creative process when all those dots connect and surprise you in completely unexpected ways. For example, a couple of years ago, I became fascinated with um, data visualization. It was also then that I realized we were relinquishing our memories to the clouds. And simultaneously, and not on purpose, I was reading a book about memory palaces, the places we make up in our minds to remember. So I thought, why don't we create a show that recalls the history of mankind in a short period of time and spatially animate data on stage through the use of projection mapping. The show is called Omen, and that I can take you in an elevator in. It sprints through five billion years of history in 20 minutes and 14 seconds, 
through the eyes of a character who loses his head. The next step now is to pull all the data we project in the show in real time. So the show you see at seven will be different than the one you see at eight, than the one you see at nine, all based on world events. And that's just the surface of what's possible. Now that we've got content, we can weave technology seamlessly within its fabric and make magic. Um, has anybody seen the video that came out on YouTube a couple of months ago called Box? Have you seen it, anybody? Just, w just one, one person? <laughs> Two, yes. Uh, well, it features projection mapping on moving surfaces. Now imagine if those moving surfaces were humans instead. I'm currently developing a show where performers can literally shape shift before your very eyes. Forget about costume change. Blink, and the actor has morphed into Marilyn Monroe, turned into Einstein, and transformed into a cat in less than two seconds. I believe in creating original stories that feel as exciting as a video game and look as sharp as a movie. I believe in getting this new generation excited and inspired and waking them up from a numb, content dumb, saturated place. I believe in stories that are non-linear as we are, hopefully, driven by electronic dance beats and classical music that move quickly in response to the speed at which we process information and clear reduction in our attention span. I believe in a place where we are told to leave our phones on so we could participate. What if theater was the pong of the digital ping, a place where the live experience had a function. Did you know that for the first time in history, we're witnessing thousands of young people playing, not against each other, but cooperatively via video games to solve real world problems? Imagine that on stage. We've now become the spectators of our own mutation. We may not die human anymore, but what makes us human? This may not be your thing, but realizing this is happening is important. The generation to come may not tolerate anything less than that. They will be born with it. We are reaching high levels of experiential comfort, and our standards will keep rising. We want to share, we want to connect, we want to experience, we want intelligence, and we want to play. Ladies and gentlemen, a new theater is on its way. Thank you.